and I'm streaming there. Let me just make sure we're streaming on Twitch. We got a bitrate, we got viewers, we got stuff. Aloha. You can call me Craw. Today is a very interesting stream. Uh, I'm, a, as you guys know, a member of Toastmasters International. And I am competing in the International Speech Contest, which is a worldwide competition between Toastmaster clubs. And as such, uh, I'm, I'm practicing giving this speech over and over and over and over again. And one of the reasons why I'm streaming a little later than normally, I usually start about 7 p.m. Eastern, is that today we were, uh, I was invited to come speak at another Toastmasters club and uh, give them my speech and get feedback from them and all that type of stuff. And you want to do things like that. And the reason you want to do things like that is because it's good to get other pieces of opinion, other thoughts into it. Yeah, so today, and I just realized my music is off, we went and did that, and I'm done with that. Now I'm going to come here and we build some Lego for a little bit because I need to decompress after that meeting. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. Uh, for the benefit of everyone, we are working on Lego set something, 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 something. The Lego treehouse. Or bag number nine. Oh, this is our progress so far. We've built a tree with the trunk, there's a little clubhouse, we have some swings, we have some people. Overall, it's pretty cool set. So yeah, I, I figured I'd get the bag done that I was supposed to build today, and at the same time, uh, kind of walk through the process so I can like decompress what it was, get some things off my chest, because I think that would be good for me to do. I need a need a bucket for my small pieces. So I've written a speech. So let's talk about. It. Toastmasters is a public organization, a nonprofit organization designed to help people step outside the comfort zone through public speaking opportunities. Organized into clubs or chapters. Clubs are in your community. Uh, I'm a member of two clubs, actually. One a club that is through my work, and one club that is in my local community. Uh, and. The clubs are a part of what's known as an area. Three to seven clubs form an area. Three to seven areas form a division. And three to seven, and of course Aloha the Bot's not even here. Let's get Aloha the Bot in here. Change bot name. Connect with Twitch. Stream Elements has not been up to top this lately. Save, send test message. Aloha the bot is reverting for duty. Great, perfect. And then three to five divisions makes up a district. Toastmasters in their Lego building. And the way that they do things. I'm gonna be building over here today. I haven't built over here ever. I usually build starting over here. Today we're gonna try a little different. So Toastmasters has speech contests. They used to have them twice a year. Now they only have them once a year. And the speech contests operate kind of like this. I might as well now. They start the clubs. Um, and you know, there's various different contests, but the one contest all the clubs in the world have in common is what's known as the International Speech Contest. It's called that because this is the one that uh, they is competed at from an international perspective. And it's the most prestigious speech contest because again, you potentially can become what's known as the world champion of public speaking. I have been competing in this contest for many, many, many years. And I've won it at my club many, many times. And then we go on to 
area where I've won it many times. Division, I've, I've won a good amount of times. And then you get to dis district, which I have never won the district in the international speech contest. Not once. That kind of eats at me too. Anyways, one of the things about the speech contest is because it is the most prestigious, people take it seriously. And I respect that you gotta take things seriously if you're gonna do it right. Um, but that also means there's a lot of, I'm not even going to be, I'm not even going to try to be politically correct. There's a lot of, this is the way we do thing isms, right? Uh, if you're a guy, you have to wear a suit and tie when you compete because that's the way we do things. I've been told once I lost points because I didn't wear a suit and tie and therefore I wasn't dressed properly. Um, and an important part about, I think about my personality is I generally want to stick it to the man, right? That's part of growing up in Oakland. The man holds us down, the man holds us back, stick it to the man. Maybe it's part of me being a member of Gen Z too that I want to always upset the status quo. Well, one of the things I find very interesting, and I think it goes back to when we were doing speech contests in person. Um, people, you would stand on a stage and give a speech in front of hundreds of people. And you know, there's only so many ways you can do that in front of a bunch of people, right? When we moved online because of COVID, this is the third year in a row that this speech contest is now being held virtually. Some opinions were starting to form around whether or not you should stand up while giving your speech virtually. And I am still, to this day, dealing with people who feel as if the only way you will win this speech contest is if you sit, stand the whole damn time. So the reason why that irks me so much is none of them have ever been able to answer the simple question to me. What will standing do for me that sitting won't? When I think about how I compete, I compete to win. But I also think about every little thing that I do in the speech contest. And I try to follow an old mantra, which kind of goes back to when I tried stand-up comedy. I'd given numerous funny speeches and generally thought I was pretty hilarious. And then I went and I tried stand-up, and I was pretty much embarrassed. And someone said to me in that experience, the thing about a stand-up comic versus someone who tells funny stories is this. A comic uses every word to set up a joke. Comics do not waste any time not telling a joke. Every word that they choose, every sentence they choose, every paragraph they choose has a joke in it and everything is building up or it is building up to a joke. And I took that approach to speech writing. I want every single thing I do in a Toastmaster speech contest to be done for a reason. I want to say I did this for this reason. And I'm making the conscious decision to sit. Because it's more comfortable. And I do not believe 
There isn't a thing I can do standing up that I cannot do sitting down. Isn't a single thing. The reason I believe this is when I watch other people compete and other people give their speeches, they're fairly limited to their space, right? Focus on me here. This is my space, right? I can go here, I can go here, I can go back, I can go forward. I'm limited to the frame. Now granted, when you're doing a speech contest, it's generally a wider frame, right? I've cropped this to this, but still, I'm stuck in this, right? So, if I'm standing, I can, I'm, I'm limited to the same damn frame. I can't move, I can't create a new frame. I guess I would be more okay with the criticism of you should stand if they followed it up with you're not moving around enough but they never do and i think that's the thing that kills me about it right so i'm going to practice the speech for your benefit for anyone who's listening and watching and you want to hear what i would say in this particular speech because again i think this is you know something you, that you may have interest in the speech is called 42 it's not gonna be perfect because I'm building Lego while doing this and that's just not the way things work. The answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything is 42. Don't blame me, blame Douglas Adams. He wrote what is known as the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. In it, a supercomputer called Deep Thought spend 7.5 million years to come up with the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. The reason why the answer is fresh, and I just realized something, there's no point for me giving this speech right now because I can't get up and move around, I'm not doing any hand gestures. Unless of course you guys really want to hear it, please mention in chat if you actually do want to hear the speech and i just think that it's it's frustrating to all right that goes over here to continually hear you need to move around when no one can tell me that i'm not moving around enough I hate the concept of we do the things that we do because those are the way that we do them. I want to spend my entire life tearing down that belief, that concept. I cannot think of anything worse than doing things for that reason. Right? I think it's it's a toxic approach. It's toxic. Kills innovation. Kills people trying new things. Challenging the establishment. And it just eats at me. When people have the audacity to tell me you're not moving you need to stand up while you give the speech why it's kind of like when you go to when you hear people complain about Aldi if you don't know Aldi one I'm disappointed in you Aldi is one of the best grocery stores you're ever going to go to in your life but one of the things that Aldi does that makes them unique is their cashiers get to sit down while they scan the items. And here's the secret about all the cashiers. They can scan faster than any cashier at any other place in the world. 
Aldi does not want their cashiers to sit down. Because they do not want their cashiers getting tired. Just so they can say they stood up. Right? Aldi wants their cashiers to get tired because they work their asses off. I have never been to a grocery store in my life where they scan my items at nearly the speed that they do at an Aldi. And anyone who tells you that they do is lying. Now, granted, one of the reasons why Aldi cashiers are able to scan things at much faster rates is because all these merchandise has barcodes all over it. I remember I was at... I was trying to scan some Aldi chips into my fitness pal and I couldn't find the barcode and then I realized that the Aldi bag of chips had about 10 lines running in circular around and it looked like it was part of the design of the package that's the barcode meaning that it doesn't matter what direction they grab the thing they will be able to scan it just dragging it over the sensor Aldi is a perfect example of work smarter, not harder. And so when I hear people complain, Brian, you need to stand you need to stand up when you give the speech. They just come across as being someone who gets angry at the Aldi cashiers for sitting down. They do. And I'm sorry, I'm never not going to be able to believe it any other way. And the reason why is simple. When I think about why you would want to stand up in the speech, it's so that you can move around. And I honestly do not believe that because of the limited space, and this, and this is why, this is why. When I watch YouTubers do their videos on YouTube, how many of them stand up? Like seriously, look at all the YouTuber videos you watch where you see people talking and discussing and doing all those type of things. How many of them are standing up? Now, there are times where they will stand up because they are at a location or something like that. Right? They're in a field. They stand up. Because, again, they're in the field. It makes sense to. But when they're sitting at their desk, they're, they're, they're in this point of view they always sit down why there is no benefit to them standing there is none and that's what grates at me and so I was it did my speech today, and I killed it because, of course, I killed it. I'm a damn good public speaker. And the person who gave my evaluation, so in Toastmaster meetings, there's always an evaluation. Always someone there to provide feedback to you about your speech. That's kind of the hallmark of it. Feedback is a gift. We want to make sure that everyone always hears that. So the person stands up to give me my feedback, and they talk about how great I am, all the things I do relatively really well, and then when they, at the end they're required... They're not required. There's no law that says you have to give someone a negative feedback. But it's just kind of assumed. You can't just say, oh, you're great, you're a wonderful human being. Keep doing what you're doing. It's not the way things work. She says the most predictable thing, which is you should stand up. And it's just it's like, why? Why do I need to stand up? Oh, because you should. Are you saying I didn't move around enough? No, I'm saying you should stand up. Why? It's challenging of authority and it's something that I excel at. 
again, that's what it is. I don't know. What are your thoughts? I mean, there were some legitimate criticisms that some other people lobbied at me, right? They felt like my background is a little too busy and uh, they feel I should just have a cover up my entire wonderful background. You can't see it in this shot because this is my, um, this is my Lego building setup. But they're like, you should just have a curtain that goes around you so no one can see your room at all. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm going to do that. Now, I do recognize my room could be cleaned up. I'm going to admit that. And when it comes to the contest, I probably will do some things to clean it up, right? Like this wall directly behind me. I'm probably going to take all that stuff off the wall. I'm probably going to take those off that wall too. I'm going to leave the lights because the lights are great. I'm probably going to clean off that table. It was just an empty table. Unless I can think of something that if I put in that table will have valid reason for me to put it. Uh, I'm willing to admit there probably is nothing I'll be able to find that goes there. It probably will just be a nice empty table. So there's value in doing that. I get that because you don't want a cluttered room. But to have like an empty room? To have an empty room, I want to know why. Why am I having an empty room? Explain that to me. And one of the reasons why I question whether or not I should have an empty room is quite it's selfish. In my speech, I'm talking about Marie Kondo and how, oh, I skipped a step. I skipped all that over there. Uh, Marie Kondo, and I talk about, you know, her concept of, you know, keeping only the things that spark joy in your life. And I do see a lot of value in that, right? This is not meant to be a criticism of Marie Kondo. I think she's amazing. She's changed my life. But I get to say the throwaway line, uh, that's all well and good if you want to have a pretty room like I do. If I'm going to say that line, and of course th there's a reason why you say the line. The reason why I say the line is I need to show that while Marie Kondo is wonderful and she's got wonderful advice that everyone should follow, Having a clean room is not going to make you a happy person. So I need to comment on that. And the most effective way to comment on that is you can't just have a pretty room. And for me to say that, I should be able to show everyone, hey, I have a pretty ass room. Like there's a reason for that. And if I have a blank wall behind me where you can see nothing that line does not have impact it does not hit which is precisely why I need to have my room behind me my room is part of the speech it's part of the selling that this person has done the things. I guess that's what I'm trying to get to. The whole reason why you do anything in these speeches because it's building to something. Every line in my speech exists for a reason. And some people are never going to see the reason. And I'm willing to admit that. And I don't have a reason to stand. So I don't. Give me a reason to stand. Explain it to me. Don't just tell me you should stand because that's what we do. We stand and we give speeches. I don't want to hear that. It's a cop out and we all know it. So that's how my evening is going. So I wanted to build some Lego. So I could vent. I could discuss this. There we 
go. It's very nice. Sorry I've been building and not talking about it, but here's what we've built so far. I think it's kind of nice, don't you? Aloha, Shy Guy Jeff. Welcome on into the channel. I think it looks good. How are you doing on this fine evening? Hopefully you're having a good time. I'm having a good time. I'm having a good time. Shy Guy, how was your last stream? I know you were making, doing some makers and crafting. How was it? Did you guys do some fun stuff there? We are building a Lego treehouse tonight. And I was talking about Toastmasters speech contests. I don't know if you heard about that, know anything about Toastmasters, or any concerns of those type of things. It was okay. I was just fiddling around with SolidWorks. All right, let's, let's decompact that statement. One, why was it okay? What could you have done differently to have made it better? We'll start with that statement. Because I believe it's always stuff we can do better. I don't know what this thing I just built is. I don't know what this is. It was short. You weren't in a great mood. That, those are legitimate reasons to have a short stream. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know how long you've been a streamer. Um, so take this unsolicited advice, however you want to take it. I strongly believe there should always be a reason you go live. And if you aren't feeling it, that is a perfect reason to not go live. Um, so that, that's what I will always tell people. I, as a follower, would rather hear, hey, I'm not streaming tonight because I'm not in a good headspace than you to come on and me say, why am I watching this person again? Second question I want to ask, what is SolidWorks? Um, and tell me more about that because that sounds interesting. Shy Guy Jeff. Uh, sh should I call you Jeff? I just want to make sure I should call you Jeff or if you want me to say your full name of Shy Guy Jeff because I believe there is nothing sweeter than the sound of your own name. And if you want me to go the whole thing, I will go the whole thing. You've been struggling. You've been working on your emotes um, for when you're feeling it. Okay. Jeff is fine. I'll try to remember Jeff is fine. Um, emotes are an interesting thing. I only have one emote. And, well, actually, no, I actually got a second emote. I need to submit it. Uh, my kids designed my one emote. It is this, my daughter, Audrey designed it. It is her favorite stuffed animal. It's a moose. It's a hype moose. Uh, my kids were supposed to be designing some other ones and they've never kind of gotten around to making more of them. Uh, my cousin, my in real life cousin, Brandocious, he came and he made me an uh, emote last night on stream and I need to upload it still. I was going to do this after the stream tonight. Jeff says, SolidWorks is a 3D modeling computer design software so is this like you build something on the machine on the computer and then you like print it out because you want to get back into drafting as a career this sounds fun you can do that with it okay okay what were you making Tell me what you're making there, Jeff. Let me know. This is getting very interesting for me. I've always found that stuff to be so fascinating. One, because I do not have the patience to do it myself. I do not. You worked in a manufacturing facility that made pipeline maintenance equipment previously, but you were laid off. One, I'm sorry to hear you're laid off. But two, it sounds like you have a very specialized set of skills. You've been out for a couple years. Okay, understandable. But having that specialized set of skills, that, that's a good thing to have, right? Like, they don't just randomly, people randomly don't have that skill set, correct?
All right, so that is in there, and then scroll down. I have to put a green dot. You want to tech for it. Okay. You're just working through an exercise book, so some random geometric shapes. Okay, very cool. Man, I, I, I'm sorry I missed this. I mean, one, I'm not sure if my attending would have made it a better stream for you, but um, it sounds very interesting. I'm following you, right? I'm just gonna go over here and make sure I'm following you. Yep, and I see that I have notifications on. Cool, 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 cool. Good morning. When's your next stream? When's your next stream? Hype it up, when's your next stream? I wanna know. I wanna know, new friend. All right, so that's gonna go on there. Okay, okay. And then I'm gonna have a third one. And that's gonna go over there. You might stream tomorrow, it's your birthday. Congratulations on another year of surrounding the sun in this planet we call. How old are you turning? You don't have to tell us if you don't want to. And then we're gonna take two of these. And they're gonna go on there. You'll be 34. Wow, you're getting up there, buddy. Where was I when I was 34? So that would have been nine years ago. All right, so that puts that as 2000. Yeah, so nine years ago right now, I had, my son was one. Oh, he wasn't one yet. He was in, he was, he was, he was in, in that zero year. Um, ooh, I know Okie Day, that could be fun. So when my children were born, um, Facebook was like a thing, right? Facebook is still a thing. I'm willing to admit Facebook is still a thing. And people would post all of their photos of all that stuff. I'm your sister's age close to it. Yeah, so I'm 43 right now. Uh, so, what was it, public? So rather than blasting out hundreds of photos of my kids every day, I put one photo on Facebook every single day. And this is, this is a gallery of all the photos of it. So let's see, where was Sam on 427? So there you go. Uh, boom, boom, boom. March 28th. So it's probably gonna be on this page. All right, that's my friend Angel. Here is Big Sam time. This is Sam on 427 nine years ago. So this is where I was on your age nine years ago. He's at a swing. This is a swing near our house. I don't know why he's wearing this outfit. But that's my wife. That was nine years ago. And then this is tomorrow's photo. Uh, new play area fencing. Yeah. It is. It was fun. I really love this project. Because again, it forced me to think about like one photo. I mean, I took 20, 30 photos a day. But I was like, I'm only going to publish one photo. So it made me think about what I wanted today's photo to be. So like this day, was it was an election day. So I took Sam, we took a photo of him next to the vote here sign. This one, some were controversial. Like no one liked this photo. It was our shadows. That's Sam's shadow, that's my shadow. Yeah, no, so it was a lot different when we were kids. The parents had to take pictures on film and all that stuff, but yeah, that's that. Nine years ago. Yeah, Sam turns 10, I think I'm gonna do this on Instagram as a kind of flashback for people. I'm gonna ask Sam's permission to do it before I do anything. Um, I kind of have a belief, um, and I know I'm weird like this, that this is Sam's, right? Like online branding, so to speak, right? It is not my 
responsibility to determine what Sam's online identity is. He's going to be turning 10. He should have say over what exists of him on the internet to as much degree as he can, right? Nothing's going to stop his grandparents or his aunt from posting pictures. But I can at least say everything that I post of my children on social media, they have given me express permission to do so. It's important to me. Because at the end of the day, it is my job as their parent to protect them. All right, now this is going to click into here. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to be building this. This was a quick build. So, congratulations on turning 34 tomorrow. Do you have any big plans? I hope you have some big plans. So I'm torn on this. Because looking at this, all right. I did that wrong, that's why. That's why I was like, why is this not making sense to me? Not a single thing planned. There you go. You hung with your dad this past weekend. It's his 69th birthday. Nice. All right, we made a mistake. We have to go fix our mistake. You know, it's probably just easier to do it this way. mistake in here I have to go fix that and if I was gonna fix it the absolute right way which I'm gonna still try to do there we go yeah, pop those things up there you go pop up the baseboard there and there and then I can put this in here. And then I can put this back. I mean, this isn't a huge, like this wasn't a structural problem. This is just an aesthetic problem. making mistakes still making mistakes this has to go on to that there now it's together uh it's weird your your birthday's the 23rd your dad's is the 23rd yours is the 28th your mom's and your sisters are a week apart in august there you go hey there you go that's pretty awesome that is pretty awesome to have all that birthday symmetry. I have to do a be right back real quick because I need to move my daughter. Hold on. Dad will be right back. Dad will be right back. He might use the bathroom. He might get a <laughs> snack. He might move Audrey. He might move Sam to his bedroom. <laughs> He might move Maggie. He might go to get a snack or a drink in five minutes. He might be right back in one minute or two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, 
six minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes, ten minutes, or uh, an hour. If you see a streamer's name pop up in the chat, he might come to rate someone. He and might just come to go home. He might just come to go to the bathroom also. And please don't <laughs> say he needs to go poop. <laughs> and he was ready for the finale. And the old chap. He's going to be right back. He's, He's going to be right back. Dad will be right back. Dad will be right back. He might use the bathroom. He might get a snack. <laughs> he might move Audrey. He might move Sam to his bedroom. <laughs> he might move Maggie. He might go to get a snack or a drink in five minutes. He might be right back in one minute or two minutes. Three minutes. Four minutes. Five minutes. Six minutes. Seven minutes. Eight minutes. Nine minutes. Ten minutes. Or uh, an hour. If you see a streamer's name pop up in the chat, he might come to rate someone. He might that. just come to go home. And I'm back. All right, Jeff says, pretty neat about 3D modeling. You can model all of those parts and then assemble it on the computer just like you're here. There you go. That is pretty cool. All right, we did all that. We did all that. We did all that. We did all that. We put that in. We put that in. We fixed that. All right, now we get to build this. That is cool. I think that that type of stuff is so fascinating because like when it comes to like even photoshopping things, I am pretty terrible about it. I'm going to dump these out. But I don't need them up there. And then that's going to go on like that. And then that's going to go on the front like that. Okay. And then that is going to go here next to the door facing outwards. I don't know how I feel about this build. I don't know how I feel about this build. And one of the reasons I don't like it, this particular thing, is I'm very curious what they're going to put over here. Because right now I got a door, I have a bathtub, I have a toilet, and I have a whole lot of open space over here. I would have liked to have had this over here. Just saying that. And this is going to go on like that. Is that my dog trying to get in? Oh, now we're going to build something that's going to go in that spot. <laughs> Lego making me eat my words way sooner than I was prepared to eat them. Good for them. Yeah. Well, Jeff, if you're still here, I hope you have a great birthday tomorrow. I hope you do cool things, even if you have not a single thing planned. I remember when I was younger, uh, my birthday is February 15th. And it f fell in what I call a nexus of terrible, terrible stuff. So my birthday always fell around uh, President's Day. It always fell around Chinese New Year. I always fell in time for my friends had other plans, or my friend's families always had other plans. And that prevented them from some celebrating my birthday with me as I wanted to most years. 
Now we're gonna do, we've done this. This gets to attach on to this one. All right, so let's look at how this lines up. This is going to go in around here somewhere. Make sure we get it in there properly. There we go. And there we go. We've built it. Uh, yeah, this was a short stream. I apologize for everyone who came on out thinking, hey, Crow's gonna be streaming for like two hours. Yeah, I wanted to just get this one bag built so we can continue to make good progress on it because it's gonna be two weeks before I have another building stream. And I could talk about Toastmasters. And on the positive side, I got to talk to Jeff, learn about his birthday tomorrow and all that stuff. Let's find someone to raid. If you know of someone who you feel like I should meet, please drop their name in the chat. I'm gonna go look to see who I am following. And uh, then we can see where we're gonna go. Let's see who we have. I strongly always believe, but I think the only, <gasps> I know where we're gonna go. I know where we're gonna go. I know where, I believe one you should always raid. Unless you just had a hate raid or something like that, then you shouldn't raid anyone. But I know where we're gonna go. We're gonna raid. Oh, I'm torn. I'm gonna need your guys' advice. So I'm gonna put a poll up, please. Respond to the poll, because I need your advice. New poll, raid question. Stardew, or Minecraft. We'll do a one minute poll. If you're out there, dear God, respond to the poll. Don't make me choose. Two wonderful human beings, I love them both. And I never get to raid either of them. I watch one all the time. All the time, I'm obsessed with her stream. I didn't even know she was on. Let's go, let's see how long she's been going. She may be getting off soon, or maybe ending her stream soon, it's a better statement. You said you're Sag. That makes sense. How do you use them tanks? Two hours. How long has this person been going for? Hour and a half. So they were both streaming when I popped on. No one's voting. You can really make me choose. You're really gonna make me choose. So hard to choose. No one voted. All right. We're gonna go to Armnestra. That's where we're gonna go to. If you don't know her, she is literally the best person on all of Twitch. She's the best. I don't think I've rated her. So let's rate her. She's got some time left. Mahalo for being here. This was a lot of fun today, everyone. We're gonna go raid Armnestra. She's playing Stardew. She's literally the best streamer on all of Twitch. You guys are gonna love her. She's the type of person who everyone should want to be friends with. And with that, I must say aloha until next time, which is Friday, where we're going to be playing some Lonely Mountains downhill. Let's go. But I thought we were friends. I've gifted him so many sea creatures. Get rid of your iPhone? Get out of here. I just remembered to water my plants today.